Hey guys, uh, today we're going to take a look at the MSI 4090 Gaming Trio. What I will be doing in this video is I will unbox this, and then I will take a look at its baseline, and then I will flash the Supreme BIOS or the Strix BIOS onto it and see if I can improve performance. Additionally, I'm going to see if I actually need um, 4 to 8, the 1 to 4, in order to draw the additional power requirements once I flash the BIOS. Okay? So let's first start off with opening the box. It's very plasticky, so it's got a high level of reflection on there. This is the regular gaming trio. Um, I believe there is a gaming X, but like I've said before, you know, you're buying the same thing, just paying more for it. So let's find out uh, what this gives us. So plastic off. All right, so typical MSI packaging should open from the top. I did also get the Supreme X, uh, the water one, uh, not the air one. Um, I'm kind of actually just waiting for a block to use that. It is the same PCB, so for you guys who are planning to water cool this card, uh, you can buy this the same block for the Supreme, and it works just fine. So I, I don't remember the phase difference off the top of my head, but you do get more phases on the Supreme. I think the Supreme is a 24 plus 4. Off the top of my head, it might be a little more than that. I have to check, so don't take... Don't take what I just said to heart. All right, in the box, you get the bracket, MSI Trio. This is the same GPU bracket that MSI has been giving for a few generations now. Uh, in addition, you also get a three to one. Ah, yeah, with the sense pins. Uh, yeah, and it also tells you, huh. Yeah, it tells you not to use like a bridged cable. You see that? Three individual cables, not a bridged. Um, I don't know who's doing that, but and if you're buying these GPUs, you should have, you know, proper power supplies for them. Okay, then we get the cart. A little stuck in here. All right, hold up. Let me get this off camera. It's stuck. All right, inside you get a warranty card. Mumbo jumbo. I'm not even going to use the adapter. Um, stay away from the adapter until they come out with a revised version. Um, essentially. It's not the connector, it's the adapter, which, you know, a lot. If you've been following the news recently, you should know it's not the adapter. I mean, sorry, it's not the connector. Okay, so here's the card itself. Uh, let me see, maybe I have to raise the brightness. Sorry, guys, no editing, going as we're going. Um, this is a metal back plate, that's nice. Uh, on some of the, I know for the 4080, they will have the Ventus. Some of the Ventus have a plastic back plate, so keep that in mind. Hopefully they won't do that this time, given the pricing. Uh, you can get a support bracket, as you can see here. And let's look at the front. Plastic shroud. Oh yeah, I had a lot of people that I've seen post on Facebook groups. Like, they'll have a trio, because this is one of the easier ones to get, along with the gaming OC. Um, MSI tends to sell these at their own store. And they seem to come in... Actually, the gaming OC seems to be the one that comes in more often. I would say this one is $16.50, I believe, which is very close to the, um, the Gigabyte, $17, right? If you can't get an FE, get the Gigabyte over this. Um, this is like, I mean, this shit with the, really, one to three? 450 watt limit? Get out of here, $16,150. Uh, that's the kind of bullshit that, you know, I don't know why AIBs think that flies this generation, but it's three slot, very nice chunky heat sink, looks to be a vapor chamber, definitely looks to be a vapor chamber, okay? So, I mean, I honestly, I don't have a Supreme Air 4090, but this reminds me of the 3090 Ti Supreme Air Cooler. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't be amazed if they were just different. For the Supreme, you, know, you get like an all metal cover, um, I think the fans might be slightly different. I don't have the 4090 ones. So I couldn't tell you. Um, I only have the uh, AIO version. Um, I haven't tested that yet. But yeah, you get three DPs and one HDMI. Um, if I'm going to flash the Strix BIOS onto this, you know how the Strix has two HDMIs? You will lose one of the DP ports. Okay? So that's just kind of how it works when you're flashing across different cards. I just want to make sure there's a BIOS switch. Yeah, see, there's a BIOS switch, Silent in Gaming. So if you fuck up, or in this case, I fuck up, uh, we'll still be okay. All right? So 
let's get this card in. Um, going to let me see here. I just want to see if all the pads look good. Okay, so I'm gonna put this card in now. Let's see how well it does on it on its own. I got the card in. You can see it's pretty big. Uh, it's about 13 inches long. All right, so have some you know size <laughs> in your case. Um, I can tell that it boosts to pretty much about 2730. Uh, temperature is under 60 C right now. So you can see running this benchmark is drawing 375 watts. Okay. So I want to see how much it can draw. So I'm going to run combustor to see if I can get it to 450. Um, this gives me a general idea of the boost. And then now I exit that. And let's launch combustor. Um, you may not be able to see on camera, but I am using uh, a three, a one to three. The one to four is right over here. So I will have that in, in the event I can't draw 600 from there after I flash the BIOS. So let us quickly just run a stress test. See how much we're pulling. Okay, so obviously there's some conversion here. Right, but it's definitely capping at the 450-ish mark or near it, right? As you can see on the power supply in the front. So let's see. I think the best way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to run Cyberpunk, I guess. Let me run Cyberpunk, uh, one benchmark, and see what we get there. And then I will um, flash the BIOS over and let's see how much improvement we can get. I'm going to try running Cyberpunk. This is like plus 270 on the core. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to crash. I'm thinking it probably will. Um, but, you know, let's give it a shot. Plus 270 on the core, I think. And uh, 800 on the memory. Um, I didn't see any flickering when I was going faster than this at Superposition. But, you know, like I said, just because you pass that doesn't mean it's stable by any means. And I find this game to be extremely sensitive to clocks. Like if you're kind of pushing it too much, it'll crash pretty quickly. And I also find that when I run it, RTX, you know, Ultra, everything maxed out, Cyberpunk does use more power than the other games would. I mean, I've heard that Minecraft RTX does, but I don't have that installed on here. So I'm not hitting a power limit, as you can see on the screen but yeah so let's just see if this finishes okay so i didn't crash and you can see that uh, i think i averaged like a little bit over 3000 in terms of clock speed um average fps 50 was that 63.71 all right uh, max fps 88.46 let me see if i can just take a photo of that for my reference uh, I do have the card running on 100% fan, which is why it's so loud, and which is why it's also so cool. Uh, I do have some winter weather advantage in this room today, so that's why you see it at 30C. Okay, so now I'm going to flash the BIOS and see if I can get any, any type of gain out of it. Alright guys, uh, we're back. I did flash the BIOS. Um, I know for some folks, when they hit the this button over here to save the file, it's not going to work. Um, that's supposed to be fixed in the next version of GPU Z. Uh, what you can do is when you use MV Flash, just do the um, hyphen hyphen save. And so MV Flash hyphen hyphen save and then file name. And that also saves the BIOS that's running right now. So you can see it's the MSI card in there, right? But if I come to look up, you'll see it shows up as the ASUS Strix. Okay, so obviously I've lost one of the display ports. Uh, I don't know which one. I plugged into the primary, which usually I don't lose. It's the first one. I always call that the primary, the one closest to the screw bracket. And let's just try to run Firmark. Actually, you know what? Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can uh, wait. Let me bring up Afterburner first. Okay. So I know that. You know, once you go over 530 watts on these cards, you're kind of really just playing that 1% gain. Like, you know, a lot of silicone lottery matters a lot. Um, but it's always nice to have, you know, as to kind of draw as much power as the board will allow, right? 
Uh, it may require a reboot. This usually afterburn doesn't play nice when I bring it back up. Okay, it's going to 100% fan. That means you picked up the card. Okay, see, so now my slider goes to 120, which is what I should expect to see if I were to run the Strix BIOS. Okay, um, let me just run Furmark and see if uh, we can get higher than... All right, see, we're pulling 608 on that PSU. There's com some conversion, but you can see I'm also doing it on the one to three, not the one to four. So what Cable Mod was saying was that you don't have to use the four connector. You can use the three. It's just the fourth one's redundancy. If you look at the way it's wired, yes. Um, like I would possibly explained in my previous videos, uh, every eight pin can draw up to like 400 watts. A little more than 400 watts. So it's really just a matter of the V BIOS telling it to draw more than that and going over the 150 watt uh, specification per se. Okay, so you can see I'm doing it off the one to three, 613. Okay, so now let me see if I can actually improve my overclocking. Uh, I may not be able to, I may be able to. I wasn't hitting the power limit earlier, so let's find out. Running Cyberpunk. Um, I'm not drawing more power than I was earlier. Uh, that's interesting. I remember when I ran this with my um, Tuff, I was drawing more power. Um, so that's interesting. Um, but the power limit is there. So if it wanted to, it could. Uh, I, I need to find a title where I can really take advantage of this increased power limit. Um, so I have to look into that. Um, but with that said, this is actually one of the higher drawing ones, as you can see. I mean, when I was running it earlier, I was pretty much hitting the cap. Um, but yeah, so I think at this point, the additional power limit does not really help me in terms of any clocks. I mean, the Strix BIOS is more aggressive, so, you know, natural boost is more aggressive. Um, but I guess uh, once this finishes, I'll take a look to see. I mean, I, I did up the RAM speed some more. All right, 64.756, that's not, that's not too far off where I was before. I think it was 63, right? Or, so yeah, not much of an improvement. Um, interesting enough, there is one question that people do ask. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can answer that. I most likely lost control of the RGB um, since I flashed the BIOS, but I'm curious to see if, I mean, I highly doubt it, but It'll be interesting if I can control that. Oh, goodness, Armory Crate. All right, guys, hold up. Let me cut through this Armory Crate crap. Okay, guys, as you can see, it doesn't even show up in Aura. So even though it is running a Strix BIOS, it's not going to show up. Uh, if you flash a Supreme BIOS, you could probably still control that RGB. Um, if you're running water, you probably don't care. So I'm pretty much hampered by temperature, dye, silicone lottery, A or B. Okay, can't really test that on Ambient. Um, with that said, uh, it's good to know that we could do this and that, you know, we can still pull 600 watts using the 1 to 3, um, which isn't surprising because last gen 39 TIs, we did pull like 580 off, you know, 1 to 3. So it's not surprising at all, but good to know that it does work. And with that said, thanks for watching. Um, sometime this week. I will be getting, I think Wednesday, I will be getting the EK uh, Founders Edition block. So I will make a video blocking that. I also have the Asus Fantex Strix block uh, and I will be blocking that. Um, and then, you know, I'll do the videos for both blocks so you guys get an idea. Uh, this card, um, I, I may disassemble, I may not. I heard that the block does not come with the Cedo one for EK. Um, I don't like the design of the Fantex one for the trios and Supremes. I think they're, you know, recycled. Uh, with that said, I know the Supreme is very popular, but as I can, I've shown you here, you know, and in my previous videos I've talked about, you know, but these variants get the cheapest 4090 you can. Okay. If you can get the founders, that's probably the best build for the money. And Nvidia, you know, saves the best dice for themselves. Okay. So thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.